What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Supper Suite at TIFF 2022 for a show. This is a show interview, a show that I absolutely adore. I was just blabbing to Clea about this, but this is one of the best things that I've watched at TIFF. And I'm mad at you all because I got the full season and I wanted to watch the whole thing. And it just derailed all the movies that I needed to watch <laughs> to prepare for these interviews. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Tegan and Sarah, I wanted to start with you just to walk us through the beginnings of this. Whose idea was it to turn your story, your memoir into a show? Was it your idea or did someone come to you with the plan? Well, Sarah told the story the other day that apparently when we were pitching the book to our book agent, uh, Mark Gerald, that we hadn't even come up with what the show was going to be about, but, or sorry, what the book was going to be about, but I was like, this is going to make a great TV show. So, Which I, is why Clea called Tegan and not me yeah, probably exactly. first. <laughs> so then fast forward, uh, maybe a year and a half later, we had sent an early copy to Clea and Clea texted me and said, I was up all night reading your book. It was so beautiful. Can we talk? And then she called me and, you know, basically said, like, don't just sell your rights. Don't just give this book away. Like this, this would make a beautiful TV show. And we've been friends 15 years and she was, she knows all the people that orbit in our world and just had so many beautiful ideas and, um, just was like, you know, come and do this with me. And Sarah and I were ecstatic. We were like, this is so fun. Never imagined we'd actually do it, but it so happened. You, the three of you have known each other for a while. There's a lot of trust in Clea, but going into this, was there anything that made you say, you can adapt our story into a TV show as long as you make sure to do this. <laughs> I don't think we were that specific, but I do think that there was a like a learning curve because, you know, we obviously don't understand TV and film as as, you know, as um, cellularly as Clea does. And I think you know, because we're still alive and because these are like the closest people in our lives, like our family, for example, I think there was a sensitivity around needing to sort of be immersed in, in the process in a way that, um, you know, maybe other people wouldn't need to be. And mostly that's just to sort of protect our own relationships to our family and friends, but probably also our relationship as as collaborators, you know, um, Tegan and I have had a long run with each other as sisters. Like we're going, I haven't broken up with her as my sister. Yeah. It's, we're about to be 42 next week. And I'm like, we've, I feel like we're pretty good at navigating, um, intense relationships, but you know, you always want to sort of set those boundaries. Cause you just, um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to lose people over something like this. But that's so. why, why, why Clea and Laura were incredible collaborators is because they were so patient with us. They let us voice all those concerns and it was it was amazing all right so clear i'm going to throw that question to you because like pressure collaboration but also a, a friendship here so going into this project was there any specific thing you circled and you said like i need to do this for my friends but also for the project overall and bringing their story to screen yeah i mean there were there were certain things early on like because we had so many conversations early on to sort of establish what the boundaries were because there were also certain things in the book that they didn't want in the show and like I really, you know, I wanted to be sensitive to them, the people in their lives, and really, you know, if there's there was anything that seemed questionable or certain things that we wanted to change, because also, like, as Laura and I got in, into, like, breaking the season, there were certain things where we were just like, well, what if this happened to Sarah instead of Tegan and things like that? And so it, there was, like, a constant checking in of, like, how does this feel and is this okay and can we take this liberty? And, like, you know, it was really just, like, wanting to do you know, wanting to do what was best, always wanting to do what was best for the show as long as it wasn't at the expense of Tegan and Sarah and the people in their lives, you know? So it was, you know, really navigating that, which was interesting because I had never adapted anything before. I'd always like, um, I just have so many original ideas, you know? <laughs> uh, no, I, but it was, you know, so it was, it was like a daunting task and thank God I had Laura with me um on on the journey but like it you know how it, it's a daunting task just because it was such a beloved book and but also that they you know my relationship with Tegan and Sarah I just wanted to get you know get out of it with like a show that they felt really good about um was my number one priority and like well one one and one a priority was like that they were really happy but then also like we all still liked each other <laughs> and could still be in the same room and you know what you can't win them all you know? <laughs> one out of two isn't bad to follow up on something you said can you give us an example of something from the book where you were trying to figure out is this going to benefit the show or should this be removed and then why you decided whatever ultimate way you went with that i mean i feel like the things from the book 
that we didn't put in the show, I think are things that maybe I don't really feel like it's my place to talk about because it is, they were still thing. They were things that Tegan and Sarah wanted to protect. So I still like, and it's not really, I don't know. Like, I don't feel good about being like, well, this and this and that, you know. You so. can you can reveal our secrets, Clea. It's finally, it's time. It's really, I just, we've always been very, been really closed off in private, but we're ready to finally tell well, people. Well, just wait. If we get a season we two, we're going to put everything out there. I thought it was actually really When you get a season two. Yeah. We manifest we're, things we're here. We're getting yes. a season two. I thought it was interesting, the thing you were saying about making that decision to decide, like, there were storylines that were Tegan's storyline that you guys thought should be like a Sarah storyline. Like I, I've never, we've never really talked about that. Like I'm curious, is it because I'm your favorite that you gave me some of the stronger moments from Tegan's story? Um, Well, it was like, as the show went on, you know, the show kind of like we started with the book, but then the show kind of took on a life of its own. And then, you know, the, we, we built the, the season in a certain way and then things start to feel like, you know, they make sense. They make more sense for Sarah as a character in the television show, you know, because it's, you know, Tegan and Sarah, uh, high school is a memoir of their lives. And then high school is a TV show that's based on that. So it is like there is a difference there. And like the characters, the characters on TV are not Tegan and Sarah, even though they are Tegan and Sarah, you know, they're fic- like more fictionalized versions of them. So it's, you know, they, you know. Things cooler. That- what she's trying to say is that our TV. <laughs> oh, please. Is she had to make it anyway. cooler to, you know. <laughs> Equally cool in somewhat different ways. Um, Laura, I'll ask you to do the honors of walking us through the casting process because these two here are gems. And the I best. know it can be like a little scary and different to cast two actors as leads in a show who have never done this type of thing before. So, what gave you the confidence that they were perfect for the roles, but also that they were ready to jump into such a big production like this? I don't like this this at all. I mean, (laughs) it's very cute. Um, I mean, we went through a a traditional audition process. We saw a lot of people. We saw a lot of good people. Um, But then Tegan on the TikTok algorithm. uh, Thank you, TikTok. Discovered these two, sent the video to us. We were like, they're very cute, but absolutely not. Um, they've never acted before. This seems impossible. Um, and then we actually had them audition and they were incredible and it was undeniable. And then they worked their butts off with an acting coach and music teachers and just went to real musician and actor boot camp. And I mean, I think the, the first day of filming, there was this energy of like, okay, this entire thing can like fall apart if they can't do it. And then, I mean, from the first second, it was like, oh my God, it's going to work. It's going to work. And then, I mean, throughout the whole season, it's like they just got better and better. And I'm very proud of them. And Aww, look at these little faces. Right. You should be so proud of yourselves, too. You really are something else in this. When you get these roles, what is something about the acting process that makes you think, like, that's going to be really tough. I'm nervous about that. And then ultimately, was that the most challenging thing or did something about the process kind of catch you by surprise? Most intimidating part was um, just like just acting in general. <laughs> God, that was intimidating. Um, and just learning how to like be able to show what I want to express on screen and be able to do that and like feel those emotions and be able to be um, vulnerable in front of you know a whole crew and the cast and everybody. I would say that the most intimidating part of the process was the process. <laughs> and and I think that um, also it was, it was pretty intimidating to know that they could have chosen someone who was an actor rather than someone who was, they just found online. And so that was pretty intimidating. It felt like it was um, uh, a responsibility to do, to do well for them. And hope, hope we, we did it. That guys <laughs> you did beyond. You really did. Beyond. You made us all very proud. <laughs> I know it's hard to find confidence in yourself in any form of art and creation, but was there ever a moment, either in rehearsals or when you were on set, where something just clicked when you were doing a scene and you said to yourselves, like, you know what, this feels right, and I feel like I am good at it. Um, I feel like that kind of came slowly. Like I, I was obviously, you know, doubting myself uh, here and there. But I, the acting lessons and everything that helped so much and was able to give me the confidence and the support from everybody here gave me so much confidence um, 
but yeah, like slowly I just gained more and more and I just felt more comfortable. I ask this question think, a lot and I feel like I get a long pause most of the time, just so you know. <laughs> um, I think I would agree with Rayleigh. It was it was a slower process, but if there was if I had to think of a specific time, I think for me showing emotion was really hard to do on screen. And so there was there was a specific time where I had to do that and I I felt as as if I was happy with with what I had done and I was okay with it and and so that would be one of the times that I could say I'm not leaving you too yet because I love asking this question to newer actors because I know sometimes when you're new to a world like this it can be scary to ask questions and kind of reveal you don't know something so after going through the process of making a whole season of a show is there any seemingly silly question about the way shows are made that you wish you had asked earlier on that you think a new actor out there would benefit from learning about I mean during shooting there was like a million questions that I was asking so I don't I don't I wouldn't know exactly what what to say for that because I asked every single one in the book. <laughs> Do you have a favorite one of the bunch or one that you think someone else would find most helpful to learn about? Um, do you? Because I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just pros. You'll teach everybody else out there based on what you do in the finished product. I mean, maybe what's really cool about what they did was they asked questions. They I think did. a lot of that people- That was the maturity like, is they, they weren't afraid to ask questions. Yeah. yeah. Kyle, come your way next. What was it like working with the two of them as scene partners? Because I imagine you don't really get the opportunity so often to work with brand new <laughs> actors who are jumping into their first project. So what was it about them that caught you by surprise and you appreciated? I mean, I was in it from the beginning. I was in love with this entire group for the minute we got on a Zoom call together. And I never felt like, I, a, mo I and Clea can speak that we all feel like we're new that every time we step on a set. So like I, I wouldn't even know how to answer that in terms of it's the same. It's like, yeah, sometimes I feel pretty good. And other times I go home at night wishing I had done something different. And it's like that's pretty consistent throughout your career. And um, this group, their entire, you know, their their entire uh, just personalities off screen and, and when they were working was I, I was in it from the beginning. I never had a moment of I mean, I was well taken care of by their writing and by Clea's directing. And um, it was a joy the whole time. And it's fun. That's sort of the joy of film and television acting is you are going you almost know you're going to be in with everyone that's been doing it for 30 years and comes from the Royal Shakespeare Company to someone that uh, that just got an opportunity because they're hilarious on TikTok to uh, a buddy that you've been doing bits for with your whole life. There was another friend, uh, friend of mine, Nate Cordry, that's in the show. Um, so you always know you're going to be in with this amazing mix. And that's really the fun. And for Clea to sort of wrangle that and have incredible confidence in her directing skills to to have all those people and know which buttons to push, when to sit back, when to not do. I mean, she has an amazing light touch with it. And um, so it was it was a joy and easy and but also fun and and. Um, uh, engaging and, and curious. We were all asking like questions about these kinds of things, you know, what the character might do, the interpretation, like you said, the journey from the the, the very fact-based memoir to interpreting that into a show to then actors coming in, having their own take and saying, oh, they play with each other differently. That might uh, affect like a, a decision we make down the line. And that's okay. The tremendous confidence that Tegan Saren showed in, in Clea and Laura in, in the adaptation process to be like, yeah, this the, the show will, will take on a life of its own. And we're, we trust you with that. It's, it was fun to be part of that. I have to let you guys go soon, but I don't want to end this interview without bringing Kobe up at least once because I've seen a lot of good work from her, but my God. So, Clea, I want to throw this to you because I know you two have collaborated and you've known each other for a very, very long time. But even with all that experience, is there anything she did on the sh on the show that made even you go like, damn, I didn't realize you were capable of that? I mean, I think... <sighs> It's a, it was such a tricky character because their mom is such a like specific, amazing woman who is like strong but compassionate and like funny and interesting and so layered. And it was, you know, and it, she, it was like tricky to crack her on the page, you know, and then I, I think that we really did. Um, um, and thank you for saying that. I was, was going to go the other way with the joke know, and then I was like, no, I'm going to redirect <laughs> joke. Um, no, but then, you know, so and Kobe is just she is such a wonderful actor. And I was like, 
but you still just don't know what's going to happen. And like I had worked with her before and she surprised me in so many ways. But the character that she played in in my movie was so different from from Sa Simone. Um, <laughs> we changed the, the names um, very late in the game. So I think we all still <laughs> say the other names. Um, but, you know, so when it was I think the amount of humor that she was able to find in it, because obviously like there there's humor written in, but there was like a levity to her, like being able to play the duality of that levity, but also that toughness. She just nailed that. It's like such a fine line. And she just I was I was so blown away by her all the time. Like I was so excited to see when she was coming into a scene, like how she was going to do it. And it was really and she's also just like the most wonderful actor to work with she is so generous to everybody on set she is just this like bright light she's so silly and fun and i just i just i love her so much she's the best i lie i'm gonna throw in one more question it's gonna make me sound greedy because you're giving us a show now <laughs> happy season two when when i don't know i don't know maybe never <laughs> i I'm just signed sure. my paperwork so um i mean it's a new story it the starts world from somewhere wants else. it i i would love i would love to do it i would love to do it i think you know it's a it's a very busy group of people and um i mean we'll see Fair maybe enough. someday i again i like manifesting things so yeah. i had to say that so i you know what keep existence. saying it listen <laughs> i'll do it i'll do it I have to let you go. Congratulations on your show. Thank I you. absolutely adore it. To everybody out there, keep an eye out for high school. Trust me when I tell you, it is a gem. You do not want to miss it. And stay tuned. We'll have more interviews from the Supper Suite for you soon.